Hi, third grade. So, we finished the book Soldier Dogs yesterday, but at the end of the story, they have some information, some factual things about dogs that fought during the war. And I thought it would be interesting to read some of these things to you. So, I'm going to go ahead and read. Did dogs like Chief really serve during World War II? Yep. When the war broke out, many Americans wanted to help, including the furry ones. Families across the country donated their dogs to a group called Dogs for Defense, who trained the brave pups to do important military tasks. In boot camp, canine trainees, canines are dogs, canine trainees learned to search for folks lost in fires and under rubble, carry cables and supplies, and alert their handlers to enemy sneak attacks. They were taught to respond to spoken commands like find and attack. The character of Chief was inspired by two of World War II's bravest soldier dogs, Chip and Jet. I'm going to read to you about Chip and Jet. So Chief was not a real dog, but this is realistic fiction, so it's a made-up story, but it could have happened, and it is based on some historical evidence. So it's not exactly historical fiction, um, but it might be more realistic fiction, but it does also have some history in it. So it kind of crosses both of those. So Chips was a U.S. Army hero dog. He was from America and he was a German Shepherd Collie Siberian Husky mix. He was a sentry dog. That means he stood watch. His strengths were bravery, speed, and loyalty. He trained at the War Dog Training Center in Virginia, Minnesota, in Virginia, in the United States. He was stationed in Europe and North Africa. His heroic moment running into machine gun fire and jumping into an enemy bunker in Italy to protect his soldiers. His honors, he got the PDSA Dickin Medal, Britain's highest honor for dogs. And there's Chips. And here's an actual photograph of another dog, Jet. Jet was a civil defense hero dog. He was British, and he was also a German Shepherd. His job was search and rescue. His strengths were bravery, intelligence, and grit. He was trained at Gloucester War Dog School and stationed in London. His heroic moment he saved more than 150 people from bombed buildings during the London Blitz. His honors the RSPCA Medallion of Valor and the PDSA Dickin Medal. Now, I'm going to read about the top 10 soldier dog statistics. Number one, 40,000 American dogs were volunteered for the war effort. 40,000. Number two, the U.S. Army used 10,000 of these patriotic dogs over the course of the war. Number three, the main jobs for World War II soldier dogs were sentry dogs, patrol dogs, messengers, search and rescue dogs, and mine detection dogs. Mines can blow up, and some of these dogs can sniff them out. Number four, Seven breeds were eventually accepted as the best soldier dogs. German Shepherd, Belgian Sheepdog, Doberman Pinscher, Collie, Siberian Husky, Malamute, and Eskimo Dog. Number five, boot camp for dog soldiers lasted just as long as it did for human soldiers, eight to 12 weeks. Number six, a dog's sense of smell is 
40 times more sensitive than a human's, making them great for search and rescue missions and sniffing out landmines and bombs. Number seven, a German shepherd can bite down with 238 pounds per square inch of force. Their bite is twice as powerful as a human bite, and their teeth are sharper. Number eight, dogs can run at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. Number nine, the Army trained dogs for use in all branches of the military. So Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, all branches. Number 10, soldier dogs in training could only spend time with and be fed by their handlers. So they'd learn to tell the difference between friends and enemies. Now, there are some questions about some of the things that happened, um, like what is a blitz? So, in World War II, blitz is short for blitzkrieg, which was the German word for lightning war. During the London Blitz in 1941, German forces dropped bombs on Britain's capital every single day for three months, and they destroyed a third of the city. Tens of thousands of people died in these attacks. And the Luftwaffe, which is the German Air Force, dropped over 41,000 tons of bombs. That's almost 100 million pounds. What kinds of planes did the German forces use? The Luftwaffe used several different kinds of planes for their Blitzkrieg bombing including the Heinkel, Messerschmitt, and Junkers, pronounced Junkers. Each plane was used for a different kind of attack, including long-distance attacks, nighttime attacks, or heavy artillery attacks. Now, this is about the Canterbury Blitz. This is the one that we read about with Rachel and Matt. What was so special about the Canterbury Blitz? It was one part of a series of German attacks called the Baedeker Blitz. Germany didn't just want to win the war, it wanted to break the British spirit by destroying their important historical sites. So the German military picked up a copy of the popular Baedeker travel guide and chose the most popular landmarks to attack. Canterbury became a target because the cathedral was built in 1070s, over a thousand years ago, and many British people loved to vacation along the coastal city there. So today, if we would think about where they might, some of the places that um, are important historical sites that might be the Vatican in Rome, it might be the Great Wall of China, um, but then it could also be places like the White House or um, the Eiffel Tower, some of these kinds of places that are very historic and known to a lot of people. Um, I think that's about as much as there is. There are other soldier dog books, and I've got them at school, and if when we come back to school next year, if you want to read more, you can come and borrow one of those books from me. Um, I think tomorrow we'll start a new story, or maybe we'll wait until Monday, and I think it's going to be a funny story now. I think we might do some Amelia Bedelia, because remember when we wrote Idioms? Well, Amelia Bedelia... She doesn't understand what the idioms mean. She thinks they mean what they actually say. But we learned that things like, oh, you drive me up the wall, doesn't really mean that we're driving a car up a wall. It means you're, oh, you're annoying me. You're making me crazy, right? So remember those idioms that we wrote and Next week, we'll start with Amelia Bedelia.
Oh, and by the way, I hope to see you tomorrow morning. I'll be sending an invitation for our Zoom meeting.